a second remote Lobby Day for Legal Aid. I really hope that next year we're able to do this in person um, at the State House. But I want to thank everyone for joining us uh, via technology today. We have a Spanish interpreter, uh, Nora Sotomayor, and you can choose Spanish interpretation under interpretation settings in the menu at the bottom of your screen. I'll give people a minute to do that. I know we have GBLS staff and board members here, uh, GBLS clients and partner organizations and representatives from many of the legislative offices. Feel free to drop your name into chat so we know who's here. And again, I thank you all for showing up today. Your voice really does make a difference. Uh, for some of you, I want to give a bit of background about GBLS. Since 1900, GBLS has been providing some form of free legal help to income eligible people in the Boston area, helping families and individuals take care of critical legal issues and access the basic necessities of life, including housing, unemployment assistance, safety from violence, and access to health care. In addition to direct client services, we also engage in legislative and systemic law reform advocacy in an effort to help all residents of the Commonwealth. You know, over the last year, or actually over the last two years, uh, you know, we've been uh, remote. And during that time, it doesn't mean that because we weren't in the office, we weren't doing work. Uh, we have been doing a lot of work and just some highlights of the, some of the things that we've done. Uh, over the last couple of years, uh, both in 2020 and 2021, we handled half again as many cases as we did in 2019 when we were all present. And this is due to the stellar work, dedication, and commitment of our staff, many of whom, even at their own personal risk, came into the office, went to court, and represented people who needed our services. <laughs> Achievements that we made during that time frame, uh, particularly on uh, dealing with systemic challenges, was around accessing health. Uh, I'm sorry, accessing and retaining childcare, uh, because as you know, childcare has a direct impact on family stability. We worked with incorporating an issue on a variety of resources potentially available to our clients. We conducted a multifaceted campaign to ensure that low-income families have access to childcare through the Massachusetts Department of Early Education and Care. We initiated a process working with EEC to bring fees in line with the federal guidelines to make childcare more affordable for our clients. Right after the schools closed in the Boston area, we worked on a federal and state level to make sure that kids were able to access the educational support that they needed. We've done a number of sort of systemic advocacy work, particularly around unemployment and benefits and making sure that people were able to get the federal stimulus payments. We represented a number of people who were not required to pay taxes and order to help them file for their taxes to qualify for the federal stimulus. And on a large scale, we worked really hard to create a moratorium against evictions in Massachusetts. We worked with our community partners in order to do that. And we had one of the best and tightest moratorium uh, laws in the country. Recently, GBLS and our allies uh, recently defended the Boston-based moratorium uh, from an attack uh, by uh, others who did not feel like we should have a moratorium on evictions. We also co-led a campaign that succeeded in repealing the welfare family cap, which excluded about 8,700 children from receiving welfare cash benefits. 
these are just a few examples of the things that we've done uh, during the time of COVID. It's become clear during the COVID area that legal aid is an essential service and GBLS served more people than ever. There were more people who qualified for our services during the COVID area and the economy has not yet improved. The need for our services is not declining and our advocates continue to rise to the challenge. I am really thrilled that we have a strong turnout of GBLS clients, allies, and staff signing on to support legal aid. It's important that legislators hear from you. Your stories are the heart of what makes legal aid so important and are a testament to why additional funding is critical. And I wanna thank you again for joining us this morning. I know it's no small feat. We have several speakers, uh, great, wonderful people who have agreed to speak on behalf of legal aid and to also <laughs> encourage you to speak to your legislators. The first speaker is Representative Tron Nguyen. Tron Nguyen represents the 18th Essex District and she's a first generation Vietnamese American immigrant and was the first person in her family to graduate from college and law school. She's a graduate of Northeastern University School of Law, and she started her legal career working at Greater Boston Legal Services. She was a legal aid attorney working on behalf of domestic violence survivors, workers, seniors, veterans, and children. She also engaged in legislative advocacy and worked with statewide coalitions. She worked with lawmakers, lawmaking bodies, to push for laws that address issues of racial and economic justice and to protect the rights of the most vulnerable population. Tron was first elected to the office in November of 2018 and is the first Vietnamese American woman elected to office in the Commonwealth. The first Asian American on the board of directors of the Massachusetts Caucus of Women Legislators and the first Asian American woman to serve as vice chair of a committee. Trom is currently vice chair of the Labor and Workforce Development Committee and a member of the House Committee on Human Resources and Employee Engagement, the Joint Committee on Mental Health, Substance Use and Recovery, and the Joint Committee on Municipalities and Regional Government. As a legislator, Trom has given the Women's Empowerment Award. She was given the Women's Empowerment Award, the Asian American Women Political Initiative Legislator of the Year Award, and the Young Democratic Elected of the Year Award. She also received Council of State Government 20 Under 40 Award. We are very fortunate to have Tron with us. Welcome, Representative Wynn. Hello, thank you so much, Jackie. I really appreciate the, uh, the kind words, but also the update on the important work that you all are doing at GBLS, um, really. And thank you to everyone in attendance today. It's so great to see many of you clients, former colleagues, board members and supporters. And it's also so wonderful to see um, many of my current colleagues and your staff who have been so supportive of legal services. Um, and it just shows just how important it is for you all to be here. You're work as advocates is truly vital, not only in passing important legislation, but in supporting legal services work and the state budget. Um, as Jackie mentioned, I began my career as an attorney with Greater Boston Legal Services um, and alongside my uh, colleague, uh, Senator Lydia Edwards. It's so great to call her that. Uh, so it's like coming home to you all. Uh, you, you all have such a special place in my heart. And the work that you do informs everything that I do now. My advocacy for legislation to help vulnerable communities and truly my understanding of the disparities that exist and are growing among diverse populations in our state. Um, in fact, it was my work at GBLS that led me to become a legislator. Uh, as I worked to help my clients navigate the legal system, too often I realized that the system didn't work for them. Uh, so I decided to work to change that system so that it would include and protect people of vulnerable communities. And it was with all of your help that I am in this position today uh, and being able to work on these very important issues. 
And like you now, I advocated with legislators to pass bills like paid family medical leave, bilingual education, the fight for 15 and earned income tax credit. Uh, it was truly such a pleasure learning from all of you what effective advocacy looks like. Uh, and in advocating for immigrants and victims of domestic violence and exploited workers, I learned just what the legislative process um, should, how it should include people, how it should include stories and how uh, we can work together and collaborate with elected officials to make um, policies that are sound that includes everyone without leaving people behind. And at a certain point, uh, back in 2018, I decided to run for office to become a state representative so I could push for these reforms. Um, but I wanted to do that within the state house. But even as a legislator, I retain my roots as a GBLS attorney. And as I said before, it informs everything that I do now. I was so proud to partner, and I've been so proud to partner with GBLS uh, attorneys on so many of my bills, whether that's tax relief for unemployed workers, which passed last year. Here, thanks to many of my colleagues here on the uh, on this call and on legislation to help survivors of domestic violence um, uh, provide relief for people in debt and to protect injured workers, which we are all still fighting for for this very session and we really certainly need your help with that. And so I'm so grateful for uh, many of the former colleagues who are partnering with me on these bills. I couldn't do that without your expertise and your knowledge and uh, just your heart and compassion really helps drive this work. And, and my heart will always be with the work of Legal Aid, uh, which is why I'm 100% in support of your advocacy here today for your push for additional funding. Frankly, I'm impressed with the um, with. MLAC's work in, uh, well, GBLS's work in 2021, helping so many people, as Jackie mentioned, just the imp incredible work that you're doing across um, not only Greater Boston, but in collaboration with other legal services across the Commonwealth to help everyone um, and to make sure that we're uplifting the people who need it most. Um, we talk a lot about equity in the state house and GBLS is walking that walk with the vast majority of your clients being people of color, women, seniors, new immigrants. Uh, your work is just so incredibly important. The pandemic really has exacerbated the number of cases, particularly in income maintenance and unemployment and um, yet legal services managed to increase the number of cases handled and decrease the percentage of um, eligible people turned away, uh, which is just so inspiring and impressive. Um, and still turning people away, is, I, I understand. I remember how it was. It was so heartbreaking, especially when they are eligible and desperately in need of legal help. And so it's imperative that we support the work that you do, um, especially in the state budget. And I join you in advocating for that increase to $41 million. Um, the budget's coming up, the House gets it in um, April, and then the Senate gets it in, uh, in May. And so uh, I look forward to working with my colleagues to make sure that we continue to support your work because I know just how important this work is because I met the clients, because I've worked with the clients and I've heard their stories. And I want to remind you just how important those stories are. So for today, when you go advocate with your uh, elected officials, I encourage you to share those stories. Tell them about the people that you've been helping and those who still need help. All of these stories have others, all these people have stories to tell. And it's so important that um, you use these stories to motivate the elected officials to fight for those, um, those people in the state budget. And so Massachusetts Civil Legal Aid um, have certainly reduced the number of people turned away to, I, I believe it was 57%, um, meaning that there are still over 40% of people who, who need help. And we, we want to make sure that we continue to address that. We have a long way to go, but our goal should always um, be to help 100% of people who come to us with need. And so with that in mind, I wish you the best success um, as advocates with your representatives. Your advocacy truly matters. Thank you so much for having me here with you today. And I'm I'm always so thrilled to be a part of, uh, of this. And I miss being at the State House to catch up with you all. But I like Jackie, I really hope that we can return next year and um and be together in person. But I hope you all stay well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Representative Wynn. Uh, that was Thank great. You. And your passion really shows through. Uh, so I am glad that you are on our side. Not that I had any doubt. Thank you so much. Another strong advocate uh, for legal aid is Senator Lydia Edwards. Senator Lydia Edwards is a career advocate. 
She's an activist and a voice on behalf of society's most vulnerable. She was raised all over the world by her military mom, but chose to make East Boston her home. Prior to being elected to the state Senate and Boston City Council, Lydia worked extensively in the legal field. She worked as a public interest attorney with Greater Boston Legal Services, focusing on labor issues such as fighting for access to unemployment insurance, back wages, fair treatment of domestic workers, and combating human trafficking. Additionally, she coordinated a statewide campaign to pass the Domestic Workers' Bill of Rights. And she won. Following the bill's passage, she was named Bostonian of the Year, honorable mention by the Boston Globe. While her title may change, her values never have. Lydia Edwards has always been on the side of the underdog. And she's, she's found new ways to take and make change in every new role that she had. As a state senator, Lydia is continuing to fight for workers, renters, unions, immigrants, teachers, to make our Commonwealth more affordable, more inclusive, and more democratic. Lydia was raised by her mother, a veteran of the US Air Force, and current union worker with the Veterans Administration. Lydia graduated from American University, Washington College of Law, and received an LLM in taxation from the University, Boston University School of Law. And she actually did that at the time that she was doing the uh, domestic workers campaign. Uh, I don't know how she puts in all of these efforts and gets all of these positive results at the same time. And in addition to all of that, she lives in East Boston and loves to run on the waterfront, practice martial arts and outlift Mayor Wu. And it's also been heard that she has uh, been skydiving. Uh, please welcome Senator Edwards. Hi. Uh, first, a real quick correction. I, I've never been able to outlift Mayor Wu. It was Mayor Walsh, actually, that I, I, I beat him on a, on a deadlift. <laughs> so just, just, just to be clear. Um, okay. <laughs> I won't let her uh, know that. <laughs> uh, trust, trust and believe she has so much on her, on her shoulders right now. I, I, as you know, I'm a fan of our mayor and I'm very supportive of her and her efforts. Um, but uh, this is again, like, like with, with Trom, who I met at GBLS, she was just a couple of floors on, um, uh, above me, actually, I think you were on the eighth floor, I was on the fifth floor of Trom. And we used to meet, have lunch and talk to each other as young attorneys, we're still young attorneys. Um, <laughs> and uh, we used to talk about the systemic justice that we would fight for. And now look at us in the state house doing just that. And I have to say, look at GBLS and the family that is that it continually forms and grows and motivates and cultivates. Um, if you look at the screenshot, you're going to see a multiracial, multilingual, multigenerational um, community that is dedicated to social justice and making sure that the American dream is fulfilled. And that's what I think so much when I think about Greater Boston Legal Services, I think about you as the organization that is about America fulfilling her promise. It is about people having second chances. It's about people feeling welcome and knowing their rights. It's the organization that is honestly, the, uh, the, for, for many of us in policy now, you are the canary in the coal mine. You are the first responders to social justice concerns and issues. If there's something that pops off, if you will, GBLS is the first one to show up and either set up the uh, intake, whether it was at a fire, which I've had GBLS do that at fires and people were displaced and, and whether the building fell down, also GBLS was there for those clients in East Boston. But you know, when we were talking about the Domestic Worker Bill of Rights, that movement was coalesced and moved because of legal services. It was, it was given so much oxygen and so much fire because of legal services. Um, you know, we can, we can look to Elizabeth and her work on paid sick leave. I mean, I remember that. I mean, this is what GBLS does is it, 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 it takes so much of the practical everyday legal representation and says there's a policy for that. There's a plan for that. There's a systemic reform for that. And that's what I love so much about this organization. You bring, you are fully informed by who you represent and you are fully informed by how the system has failed them and then you turn around and you just don't 
complain about it. You just don't continue to work within it. You say, we're going to try and fix it. And that's what I think this is. This is a constant back and forth in a good way to elevate our systems again, to fulfill the promises that we have as a country, as a state, as a city, wherever you may be. Um, I wanna just highlight so much of the work um, that I'm able to do because of GBLS. And it's it literally, there's not an aspect of my job, an aspect of representation, an aspect of a fight that I haven't turned to a GBLS attorney for. I'll give you a perfect example. Suffolk Downs. Suffolk Downs is the single largest private development in Boston's history, okay? And it's development, it's looking at zoning, it's looking at density, it's looking at all of these different things. So normally you wouldn't think, what is she going, there's no one who lives there. There's no infrastructure there. So why on earth would I be in constant conversation with GBLS attorneys? Because we came up with zoning reform to affirmatively further for housing, to make sure that as we build in the city of Boston, we're the first city to do this, that we are integrating our communities, that we are looking at the most vulnerable populations and that we plan for them to have a home in every single community. This is following the Fair Housing Act of 1968 and the unfulfilled promises from that act that Obama only 50 years later tried to bring about in federal regulations that Trump then tried to kill. And then we said, no, in Boston, we're gonna write our own. That's what we did. And I'm looking at Nadine nodding her head. I'm looking at so many people who were part of that conversation, but more importantly, once we got that zoning done, how did it apply? And how, who's gonna be the stewards of that kind of unfulfilled promise in writing? Suffolk Downs is 20 years long in terms of a development. A lot of institutional memory could be forgotten, but because of GBLS and the attorneys who were there to help write this amendment, they're gonna be there to help also hold the developer accountable. That's the kind of innovative thinking that we are trying to get to when we're literally creating the newest neighborhood in Boston. To put it in context, all of East Boston where I live is 15,000 housing units. Just on the Boston side in, in, uh, in um, Suffolk Downs, we're creating 10,000 housing units. Well, now I'm the senator for the entire campus, which includes Revere, which is another several thousand units. And it's how that is developed and how it grows. We will be able to um, close, hopefully, the racial wealth gap. We'll be able to provide home ownership opportunities. We'll be able to learn from the mistakes that we have made or the institutional outright racism, such as redlining, that we did in every single community that we have. And GBLS will be there to help guide that moral compass. That's what I am talking about. It is not just the incredible, immediate, running to court, dealing with the emergencies when, when our society, when our moments are on fire, you guys are there. But it's also seeing so far into the future of us being our better selves and coming up with the policies to do that, that makes me a better advocate. You know, Trauma and I both cut our teeth, I think, and learned how to advocate and learned how to come in and out and see the law for what it can do, but also how it has failed people. And so that's why I'm so proud of her leadership when it comes to language justice, when it comes to immigrant justice. And of course, yesterday we can all clap our hands for the Mobility Act getting out of the house. Yay. And we all know GBLS was there in many cases and legal services in general uh, was there in many cases to represent and fight for immigrants who were being pulled over for driving without a license. The fact of the matter is we see humanity in everybody and believe that everybody is deserving of a voice and a fighter. And so Trauma and I are still fighting for right to counsel to make sure that that becomes an institutional conversation for us that is funded by our, um, our state house. We're still fighting to make sure that we are expanding legal services. That's how much you have changed, what changed our society. We know you need to be everywhere. And you guys have done not only just an incredible amount of work, I thank you so much for the statistics, 2000 cases just in my Senate district alone, 2000, thank you very much. And that helps me be a true advocate, but those are the kinds of numbers that are very important for us to see as lawmakers. And I think about, there are a lot of people, uh, senators who don't have a legal services. There's legal services deserts in the state. And so I think of all the people who fell to the caps chasms, if you will, in other parts of the state. And I think in so many cases, you guys have done more than your fair share of helping to represent and fight for so many people. So I'm here, um, I'll always be here. You guys helped me to get here 
And I am grateful for that. And I'm grateful for you standing on my side, holding me accountable, helping me uh, continue with the moral compass to make sure again, America fulfills her promises. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me today. Well, thank you, Lily, Lydia. We are very grateful that you and Trump are where you guys are. Uh, you're passionate about legal aid. You've experienced legal aid. And we are so, so happy to have you in our corner. So thank you very much. And I thank you both for taking time out of your really busy schedules to be with us today. Um, I think it's very enlightening for us to hear from you. And I think it's, uh, it's a rah-rah, uh, you know, for uh, our people who are on the screen and supporting legal aid and ready and willing to talk to their legislators. So to hear from gifted legislators like you all, um, I think is encouraging for all of us. So thank you. You know, when clients come to GBLS, they're not generally facing only one legal problem. People come to us with a significant number of issues. Uh, our advocates work together across our practice groups in order to help clients with all of the issues that they are facing. We will show you a video of a speaker uh, who recorded her story to share with you today to demonstrate the importance of legal aid, not just in housing, not just in access to income, but the combination and the impact of having the ability to go to a legal aid office and get assistance on a variety of legal issues in order to move the ball just even a little bit forward. So Lauren will share the video. Good afternoon. It is a pleasure and a privilege to be here today. My name is Isabel Echohofer and I am issuing the statement in support and acclaim of Greater Boston Legal Services, the nonprofit legal services agency whose assistance on my behalf over the past year has been absolutely life-saving. GBLS's mission, efforts, and work in support of disadvantaged populations and individuals here in the Boston area are beyond invaluable in keeping the city's vulnerable populations from ending up in dire and potentially catastrophic personal and legal situations. GBLS is a life-saving organization staffed by some of the most dedicated, brilliant, and unstoppable attorneys anywhere. It is therefore critical and imperative that this agency continues to receive the funding that it needs to go on providing the critical services that it provides. I would know, exactly one year ago this month, I was one of those individuals who was financially destitute and facing homelessness. I am legally blind and due in part to this severe visual disability as well as due to the loss of income brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic, I had gone through my entire life savings and was facing eviction from the landlord in whose building I had lived for the last nine years and had always paid rent out of pocket dutifully and on time. I have a bachelor's degree in biology. I went to Framingham State University and studied pre-med. I then got a job after graduation at Harvard Medical School doing lab science in the laboratory of a pioneering researcher in cancer research. I then moved on to the biotechnology and pharmaceutical industry and continued to do scientific research for them, specializing in preclinical drug development. During this time, I also went to grad school, focusing on a PhD in clinical psychology at Suffolk University and was working at three and four jobs the entire time. I have been a member of the Boston Workforce for 25 years. And throughout those 25 years, I've always uh, done my best to contribute to society, to volunteer for organizations, to lead a healthy um, and holistic lifestyle, to be socially active in the city, to donate to charities, um, and generally to ensure not just my own financial survival and future, but to help those around me as well. So I'm not sure how I ended up homeless and financially destitute, aside from the fact that I am legally blind and my bad eyesight prevented me from being able to effectively navigate the application systems for government benefits and agencies 
um, that should have been much more functional in providing access to all types of applicants, regardless of disability or age or societal status. Um, I, I found myself going through my entire life savings just to pay for basic living expenses because the unemployment uh, assistance that I had applied for in October of 2020 took over nine months to be paid out. And who has nine months worth of life savings? lying around. I certainly didn't. And so five months into waiting for these benefits to be released, my landlord decided to uh, start an eviction process against me, even though they knew that I had applied for rental assistance and was waiting for that application to be processed. But again, because I was visually disabled and unable to navigate websites, application websites, the application that I had put in for rental assistance in December of 2020 was not paid out until May of 2021, which is five months. So this is where GBLS comes in because I was in a horrible, uh, I, I was facing disaster basically. My landlord had given me a 14 day notice to quit um, in February of 2021, so a year ago. And I didn't know what to do or where to go or who to turn to. Most people do not have the thousands of dollars lying around in order to begin to secure legal assistance because when you go to a law firm, they ask you to pay a retainer and it's usually a couple thousand dollars. Um, what do you do when you're in that kind of catastrophic situation and you don't have a penny to your name? So this is where Kristen Hardwick comes in. And let me tell you a little bit about Kristen. I have um, a, a statement prepared about her because I want to make sure that everything that she does is recognized and mentioned here. So. Kristen Hardwick in March of 2021, fearlessly took on my complicated and very dicey housing situation when, as I mentioned, through no fault of my own, I was facing eviction and homelessness from an overzealous and trigger happy landlord who had proceeded with the eviction of my nine year tenancy while in the midst of an eviction moratorium and of a global pandemic. Kristen took this on anyway. She was brave and fearless and thanks to her swift and tireless intervention, my tenancy was saved and the court hearing for the eviction was canceled, even though it had already been scheduled and was on the books. As I write this, Kristen Hardwick continues to work on my behalf in obtaining and renewing rental funding, something that I would not be able to do on my own, because again, I can't do anything. Everything is a struggle when you literally can't see. In May of 2021, Kristen very kindly and generously referred me to Hannah Tanabe, who is also a staff attorney here at GBLS. Hannah specializes in intervention and advocacy on the part of clients who are facing um, the kinds of challenges that I was facing with the Department of Unemployment um, and who are struggling to obtain the benefits that they are rightfully owed. Hannah is a hero, and she immediately tackled an incredibly tough and tangled mess left by the dysfunctions and ineffective infrastructure at the Massachusetts Department of Unemployment Assistance. Over the last 10 months, Hannah has navigated an arduous process in retrieving funds that have been owed to me by DUA. This has taken nearly a year to resolve and Hannah's continuous intervention and ongoing assistance has been nothing less than heroic. She is an absolute superstar and I cannot say enough wonderful things about her. My living situation and livelihood were both rescued by the tireless advocacy and dedicated hard work of Kristen Hardwick and Hannah Tanabe, these two talented and amazing attorneys. Kristen Hardwick. On our behalf, and on behalf of disabled and disadvantaged clients, is beyond invaluable, not just to the clients and to their families, but to the overall community and to our society and nation. Legal services and representation are currently a luxury that very few people in today's pandemic weakened economy can afford. As I mentioned, most people don't have the few thousand dollars necessary to pay in retainer fees just lying around. Um, I certainly didn't. And this is where organizations and agencies 
such as CDLS, are absolutely critical for the survival of society's most vulnerable. In spite of all of my efforts over the last 30 years um, in investing in education and career, I had unwittingly become one of society's most vulnerable. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who is in this situation in spite of their best efforts and in spite of all of the years of work that they put into contributing to society. There are not enough words to describe the infinite gratitude that I have for this phenomenal organization and the life-saving and utterly transformative role that they have anywhere. I only wish that I had the financial means right now to donate funds to GDLS and to its staff that has done so much to help me over the last years. What I do have is the story of my experience with GDLS that can hopefully speak even louder as to the incredible necessity for continuing to fund this organization, its amazing staff attorneys, and the invaluable work that they do. Thank you, Kristen and Hannah, for your tireless work and for everything, everything that you do to help society, to help people such as myself, and the miracles that you perform every day to those who otherwise would have little hope and recourse in the face of daunting challenges and imminent disaster. I cannot thank you enough again. Thank you, Isabel, for sharing your story. You know, we all have our stories to tell, whether we are clients, community partners, or staff. Now's the time to talk to your legislators about the critical need to support civil legal aid across the Commonwealth. 